happy life of step i don't even know how long it's been since i posted anything i had kind of thought about like starting something completely different like more focusing just like on true crime and mysteries things like that but i just decided to just you know at least for now just keep posting on here um i had every intention of doing something for october but obviously i just never got around to it but here we are for november um and i wanted to start off with a thanksgiving crime that happened so let's just get right into it so we're gonna be talking about omaima nelson so she was actually born in egypt and then she immigrated here in 1986. In 1991, when she was 23 years old, she met William Nelson. So they actually met at a bar playing pool. And within a few days, they were already married. So obviously, like with a rushed relationship, you don't really get to know your partner well enough, you know. It's a few days people can pretend to be whatever they want to pretend to be for a few days just keep in mind that this is all coming from her side obviously he's not around anymore to tell his part but you know she thought she was marrying into this amazing life and it turned out to be something completely different so omaima did claim that during the period that they were married she did suffer sexual abuse from her husband. She claimed that William had kinky requests when it came to sexual activity and he would actually get mad when she would refuse to take part in certain activities. So once that started happening then that's kind of when she started seeing this other side of him. So aside from like the sexual abuse she said that he would also physically abuse her when she would refuse to take part and I guess at one point she claims that his form of punishing her for refusing to partake was by throwing her little kitten out of the window. At one point she claims that William said, I paid for you, I'm getting what I paid for. So yeah. Fast forwarding to November. So on November 28th, 1991, Omaima claims that he had sexually assaulted her that day in their home. And then he was actually trying to strangle her. So what she did was she hit him with a lamp and then stabbed him with scissors and then after the scissors she started beating him with a clothes iron after he was dead omaima didn't stop there she skinned his torso cooked the decapitated head and fried his hands in oil in effort to remove his fingerprints and then it is also reported that she castrated him as revenge for all of his sexual assaults then she mixed up body parts with leftover turkey because you know it was thanksgiving so she mixed up human body parts with turkey and began to dispose of everything in the garbage disposal and neighbors did claim actually that they heard the disposal running for hours after bill's reported time of death supposedly she actually even offered a friend seventy five thousand dollars to help her dispose of this body and i did find a couple of reports where it stated that she had actually made a statement to the psychiatrist claiming that she had cooked her husband's ribs 
and barbecue sauce and eaten some of them. So there were claims that that was stated from her to the psychiatrist, but later she denied this comment. So that's kind of a little bit, you know, up in the air. I'm not sure what's true or not. On December 2nd, 1991, Omaima is arrested as the suspect in William Nelson's murder and then her trial began December 2nd 1992 so just exactly one year later. During the trial it's actually revealed that when she was living in Egypt she didn't have necessarily the best childhood. You, you could say she had a horrible childhood actually. She claimed that she was victim of unimaginable child abuse in Egypt. She actually went through female genital mutilation and then you know as she got older she you know became this beautiful girl that she was actually a model as well so as she got older the prosecution claimed that she actually started trading her body for rent or cars she started using her body as a means of getting what she wanted or the lifestyle that she wanted let's put it that way once she got married you know due to the genital mutilation and the constant sexual forced sexual activity it was super traumatic and painful so during the trial a psychologist did testify that she suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder and claimed that she was actually in fact psychotic. Also during the trial, the psychologist testified that Omaima had gotten ready or dressed up before she continued with the mutilation of her husband's body. She put on red shoes, a red hat, red lipstick and then to go back to that statement of that she had cooked the ribs this is where they claimed that she had made that comment more specifically she had said that she had prepared the ribs like in a restaurant and said out loud it's so sweet oh mama like i said she denied that she had stated that and she made a specific comment she said i swear to god i did not eat any part of him I am not a monster. Then by the commissioner, she was questioned and she asked, what was your purpose in cooking him? To which Omaima actually had no response. On January 12th, 1993, Omaima was convicted of second degree murder and her sentence was 27 years to life and she first became eligible for parole in 2006 which was denied because the reason being was that they found her still to be unpredictable and a serious threat to public safety so then in 2011 she was eligible for parole again her comments that she made while requesting were she claimed that she was no longer the same person that she was 20 years ago and that she was no longer a woman who refused to let go of any pain anyone had ever caused her and she also claimed that she had looked for love in all the wrong places. But she now valued her integrity and her journey. And she had a strong desire to help others. She requested that she be granted the freedom to get out of prison and return to live in Egypt with her family. In her claim of change, she provided evidence, which was that she had actually remarried while she was in prison. Since they were married while she was in prison, they had conjugal visits. So her defense was that she had gotten three day conjugal visits and pretty much she was put in this scenario where she would have the opportunity to kill again, but she didn't. So during this parole hearing, they did have William's daughter go or she, she went she felt she could go and speak 
Um, it is said that once it was her turn to speak, it did take her a little while to kind of compose herself and be able to say what she wanted to say to the board. During her statement, she mentioned how she wasn't able to have her father present for her wedding. You know, he wasn't able to walk her down the aisle. Margaret now had a eight week old daughter that William was not able to meet. And she did also claim that that night of Thanksgiving, William had actually invited her over as well so that she could meet his new wife. And Margaret admits that she was angry and refused his invitation, but yet William maintained his composure. He remained kind and patient. At the end, she looked up from the statement that she had written out to read to the board and she said, I don't know the adequate punishment for a murderer who doesn't even leave a family of body to mourn over, but I do know you don't let her out. Yeah. So after that parole hearing, she was denied parole again and this time it was stated that she had proven to not take any responsibility for the murder that she committed and they felt that she would not be a productive citizen if released. As of now, she is still in prison. She'll next be eligible for parole in 2026. Omaima Nelson has actually been compared to Hannibal Lecter from Silence of the Lambs. I would hope everybody knows but you know he's a fictional character, a serial killer, and a cannibal. So this real life woman has been compared to Hannibal Lecter. Her case has also appeared on a few different TV shows. So it's appeared on Happily Never After, Deadly Women, and Model Killers. And then there was also an episode on Snapped. So yeah, this is our first Thanksgiving murder for November. I do have another one lined up that I'm hoping to get to so that way we can get that out before Thanksgiving. So try and bring cases that aren't very well known or you know that aren't those popular well known overdone cases. So let me know what you guys think if you have any suggestions or anything that you know maybe like a hometown murder or a mystery or something that you feel that isn't very known you know just drop it in the comments below i will gladly do some research on it so thank you so much for watching um thank you to those that have stuck around and not unsubscribed due to the lack of activity on my end so please be sure to give this video a like subscribe share and i will see you guys next time bye mm -hmm.